All right, so welcome to the vi playlist on classical mechanics. So I want to start this playlist basically by, ex by explaining what classical mechanics is all about. So classical mechanics deals with the motion and the interaction between bodies from a macroscopic view. So you will know that there are two main kind of fields when it comes to physics. There is the classical uh, physics and then there's the quantum physics and in terms of mechanics when we talk about mechanics we usually talk about particles or bodies or multi multi-body systems when, when we talk about mechanics we usually mean things like um, kinematics so basically velocity acceleration displacement all as functions of time with respect to time and then we also analyze dynamics of a system which deals with things like forces and energy and momentum. So those are the fundamental principles that underlie the two fields that you see here. Now, classical mechanics, you may think, well, we have been exposed to it quite a lot. And I think if you do any courses in engineering mechanics, you probably know what statics and dynamics are. You know how to solve problems involving the motion of bodies and all that. But well, classical mechanics has actually become a lot more specialized in terms of what it actually means. So just to give you an example of what, what that is, I'm going to show you a simple example from classical, not classical mechanics, but essentially what you would see in, in fields like engineering mechanics. So suppose you have a mass and then there's a force, an external force that is applied onto that mass. And now if you draw the free body diagram of this particular object, you are going to have a bunch of different forces acting on it. So you're going to have the, the weight acting downwards, you have the force, then you have a normal force that the floor exerts on the back onto the object. And then you may have friction forces involved. And then there are relationships between friction forces and, and the normal force. So you have friction coefficients like static friction. And there's a whole range of things that can actually happen here. And you can analyze this in terms of a static kind of problem. So before the block actually moves, or if the block is actually moving, you can analyze the forces acting on it by considering that it also has some inertial force on it. So this would be acting about its center of mass. So you have the mass times its acceleration. And then that would also come into the equation for when it comes to solving for all the forces in the x and y directions and then you can extend this concept further into the third dimension and take all those things into account. In classical mechanics, namely Lagrangian and Hamiltonian mechanics, which are the two main focus uh, points of this series, so Lagrangian and Hamiltonian mechanics, Hamiltonian we're mainly concerned with two main things. So, so the first thing we're concerned with is energy. So we want to find the total energy of a system and we know that we need to add up the kinetic energy and the potential energy and any other external sources of energy that there may be. So immediately the first concept that comes into mind is the conservation of energy. When it comes to Lagrangians and Hamiltonians, we also look at things like the momentum of a particle. And you know that momentum is a vector quantity, so you need to look at it from the point of view of a vector. So you have the velocity times the mass that gives you the linear momentum. You may also have angular momentum, which results from a basic cross product of vectors. So you have your position vector, and then you have your linear momentum, and this results in the angular momentum so you can resolve this into two things you have mv something like that and this is the general idea behind the things that we do here so when it comes to Lagrangian and Hamiltonian mechanics what we're mainly concerned is energy conservation and how energy plays a role in the the way that these things move and the way that they behave under the effect of external forces so just to show you an example, in the case of Newtonian mechanics, we could analyze the system by deriving the equations of motion in terms of a differential equation. For, so for example, you, if you have something like a spring, if you have something like a spring like this, and then there are no external forces, you could derive some kind of second order differential equation minus or 
I think this would be plus k times x equals to zero or something like that. So you have a stiffness k here. And then you would basically derive this using Newton's laws. You use the sum of the forces in the x direction. Then you know that the acceleration is actually the second derivative of the displacement with respect to time, substituting the terms, and that gives you the what you actually need in order to solve for the displacement of the of the box in terms of the uh, displacement in as a function of time essentially. In the Lagrangian and Hamiltonian formulation, we won't be deriving equations in this form. We're actually going to use a more general method which does not actually care about the coordinate system, but it's a lot more general than that. And it actually uses energy uh, conservation instead of deriving things with forces. So there are some limit there are some advantages to that and there are obviously some limitations, but we'll see why this formulation is important. The other reason we need to learn classical mechanics is because it plays a vital role in the fields of quantum field theory and particle physics. So you can think of classical mechanics as one of the building blocks of those quantum theories that are much higher than just quantum mechanics. Because you know, if you do quantum mechanics, you're usually concerned with solving the Schrodinger equation. And you know that that can be solved for, for very special cases, for single particles, and then you can solve it for, say, the hydrogen atom and so on. You don't really need classical mechanics for that, but when it comes to field theory and all that, classical mechanics actually comes in quite handy. So this is why we need it mainly. And it also describes things like interactions between elementary particles and so on. So whether you're doing physics or engineering, I think, I think that doing Lagrangian and Hamiltonian mechanics will be very very beneficial for you at least in the sense of giving you a much better understanding into the actual reasoning that is used in physics not just deriving things using newton's laws but looking at things from a different perspective and arriving at exactly the same results